Hello guys and welcome to my let's play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, this is a game that I've been really interested in for the past probably two years now? Two or three years. Um, my friend actually, my friend Shadow got me into this game like hardcore. And uh, yeah, it's just something I've always been wanting to let's play because I played the game, uh, this game, like forever and a half ago, and I <laughs> don't remember shit from it. So, <laughs> so there's that. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I should mention uh, this is going to be on in the emulator, and if I so choose to do the next couple of games, um, they will also be on an emulator since I do not have a. DS or a DS capture card. Uh, so, all right. I guess without further ado, let's go. Episode one, first table turnabout. Uh, I quoted that without even trying. I can't get caught. Not like this. I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Oh shit! August 3rd. 9.47 a.m. District Court Lobby Defendant Lo Defendant Lobby number two. Party? Fucking up my voice. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, hiya, Chief. Hey, uh, I'm glad I made it on time. Nice to say, Phoenix. I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your clients as well. Uh, thanks. A actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the, the defendant before the case? Yeah. Actually, I kind of own up my current job. He's one of the reasons why I became a attorney. Well, that's news to me. The wall, I don't fucking share everything to you, now do I? I'm gonna help him out. Anyway, I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. <laughs> it's over. My life. Everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yeah, that's him. Death, despair. Ooh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Sounds like he wants to die. Yeah. Uh. Nick. Hey, hey there. Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell him I'm guilty. Kill me. Give me that death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. W w what? What's wrong, Larry? No, oh, it's all over. I'm, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in the world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? The person responsible for your gr your girlfriend's death. All the newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. The first case is a fairly simple one. 
bitch got danked. The guy arrested was her was the unlucky unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Yeah. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, Jesus Christ, that's forever. It's usually been true. He has had a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He's just really dumb. But I know a but I know better than anyone that, he, that he's a good guy at heart. That and I kind of owe him one, which is why I took the case. It's Claire's name. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I swear. I think. Plus, he did it. Nah. August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court Room Number 2. Shut the fuck up. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Watts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, uh, the defense, that's what it's called, is ready, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first court. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Um, I'm a little flabbergasted, nervous, and yeah, nervous. Your, your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your life. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Um, fuck you, and, uh, thank you. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to assert certain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor, definitely, Your Honor. Oh shit. And hands shaking. Eyesight fading. Knees are shaking. There's vomit on my sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Oh shit. The test will consist of a few simple answers. And questions, not answers. God damn. I was really drunk last night. Now I'm humble. Answer them clearly and consistently. Please state the name of the defendant. In this case, uh, Phoenix Wright. Uh, I am the defendant, and I'm defending myself. Not being the defendant. It's Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Surprisingly, you're fucking right. Just keep your wits about you and move mind. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what did the victim say. Phew, I know this one. I'm glad I read the case. Report cover to cover so many times. It's, uh... Oh, shit. No. No way, I forgot. I forgot the total fucking blank. You're up to it. Don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the, the, the victim. Uh, 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 yeah, I, 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 I totally do it. I told you. Um, your boobs are huge. I just forgot temporarily. I totally know her name. Uh, I think I feel a migraine coming on. Cindy, um, Cindy, yep, 
Five of death, seven. Okay, seven. Uh, Four p.m., five p.m. Cause of death, loss. But shit. Yep. Cindy. may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butt to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get a chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything Unfortunate. Uh oh. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're fucked. We're just totally 120% fucked. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim has recently dipped? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, and they all died. That wasn't dumb. She just wasn't taken by phone calls and saying me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is genuinely what we mean by dumb. In fact, she had completely abandoned you. She was seeing other men, meeting me. I mean, look at me. I am one sexy motherfucker. She had just returned overseas from with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it lies. I don't believe a single word of it. Your other the victim's passport. According to she was in Paris until the day before she died. That was added there. That was very cool. Her. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have the and did not have a large it appears that she had several sugar dens. 
Daddy. Sugar? Flower. Yes, older men who gave her money and the kids. She took their money to use. Continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Ah, oh, shit. No, boy. So not looking good. <clears throat> Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. She would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies the matter. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing from the scene of the crime. You will bring that motherfucker in. Order in this court. Mr. Perry, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, you're out of This is bad. So bad. Bye, Larry. Have fun in prison getting raped. Don't drop soaps. On the day of the murder, my witness was sealed. Apparently, making me yawn was selling newspapers in the victim's building. Please, Mr. Bring it. Please bring Mr. Frank Schwitt to the stand. Oh, would you look at you? Look at you. You totally fucking did it. <laughs> Mr. Schwitt, will you you sell some newspapers? Subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Newspaper, yes. Mr. Schwitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness account. I was going towards the door, selling newspapers here the description when I saw that a man being in the pie. You must be in a hurry, did you? But the door half opened behind. Thinking it strange, I took I, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her playing there. Whoop, not moving. The end. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to call the child. I thought I thought to call the police immediately. How 
way, but the form and her apartment was not working. I went to a nearby park and found a public ball. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant getting right over here. You tell the truth. I can't defend you. I can't against Chessbot. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone working in the apartment? You ought to, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Our phone supposed to work during a blackout. Yes, you are. However, sub cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Schwitt used was one of those. You're on it. I have a record of the blackout for your pers- Yeah, blah, blah. Stuffy nose. Persuale. Okay. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, honor. You may begin your cross examination. Cross examination, Your Honor? Alright, right. This is it. The real deal. The nitty gritty. Uh, what am I exactly supposed to do? Why? You're supposed to expose the lies and the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? Who's lying? Your client is, isn't it? Innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Was your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There is bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the, in the witness's face. Um, um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Alright, cross-examination, let's do this. Door to door selling newspapers. Subscriptions when I saw a man in the apartment. Eh, hold it. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Er, I don't know. He just seemed strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad. Witness were framed from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So, what happened next? I thought he must be in a hurry because he opened the door up. Let me check something real quick. From noon to 6 p.m. Never been spoken. Eddie Wood would look 
You found the body at 1 p.m. Are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for shit. <sighs> Frankly, I found that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death would be sometime after 4 p.m. There was no body. Er, no body to find. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Objection. This is trivial. The witness really forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that really hard to believe. Mr. Schwitt, why were you so certain that you find the body of 1 p.m.? I. Uh, well, I. Uh, Great job, right? Find a way to put him on the spat. That's all you have to do? Point out the contradictions. Lies always beg at more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait! I remember now. Who would you care to give your testimony again? Time of discovery. You see, when I found that body, I heard the time. There's a voice saying it. Saying the time. There's probably something. Dude! Blackout. You were, you were here with us. When we said the blackout. That's what I thought was going to be at. I'm terribly sorry for that misunderstanding. Hmm. I see. You heard a voice saying the time? on the taped program. That's right, you may cross-examine the witness. Right? You know what to do. I got this one. Trust me. Bitch ain't getting away. See, when I found the body, I heard the I would imagine it's this one. Objection! Objection. Hold it right there. The prosecution said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You could have heard the television or a video. I, well, er, the difference has, has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Schwartz? No, I, I find it quite pleasant but do Wait. Yeah. Wait. I remember now. Mr. Schwitt, the court would prefer to hear an accurate, accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are hard to crack them. That. That I seem rather distraught. I mean, look at him. Look at that. That wiggle. <laughs> My apologies, John. Much of the shock by the body. Very well, Mr. Short. Let's hear your testimony once. Yeah, the 
Bird weapon. Dude, really? Yeah. Who saw it? A clock. I guess that would explain it. Uh, the first main cross examined this fuck up. Gladly. Objection. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? You with your objections and your evidence. Who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Schwitz. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Yeah, I did. If I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. The witness stated this statue was indeed a clock. The next up is the switch. You just tell it and it says the time out loud. It doesn't look like it's a clock, so I submit submitted as it as a statue. My apologies. Are right, serious. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, right? It appears that the witness witnesses testimony was correct. This is a clock. Have any problems with his testimony? Yeah, the fact that he said he saw it. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was the clock to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. <laughs> Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do, do better than that. I can prove that you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock. I guess you could say, you really cleaned her clock. And shock, the shock of the blow triggered the clock's force. That's the sound you heard. Okay, sliding. Order on the fucking court, Jesus Christ, you are just a god, Mr. Wright. Yes, I know, Your Honor. Thank you for just, just giving me a little leeway there. Mr. Shui, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understanding the sense the murder weapon spoke as just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! Ooh, what's the meaning of this? This is all a baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the witness's face. <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? Jesus Christ, man! I that that day, I never, I I, I look, I the clock. I heard, no, I mean, I saw, saw. <laughs> 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He, he killed her. He should burn, burn, give him death. What a Jesus Christ, get that man another toupee. You're out of a, a little bit, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the... Dude, look at his face. That should be evidence, evidence enough. Threw his toupee at my face. I don't even like toupees. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound witness of any evidence. The whole case is writing on this. I think of, yeah. Just sound the fucking clock. If you simply just 
sound the clock. Let's sound the clock in now, here in the court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very, very closely. Felipe, I think it's page 25. That surely is a strange way to end off the trial. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we heard the clock. What is your conclusion, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Chouet heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Chouet, try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Ah, oh, crap. What's he talking about? I may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? We can't prove that. You don't have a case. I was right. How am I supposed to prove that? A cross -examining, examination of Mr. French Wood. I came all this way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal? You threw your fucking toupee at my face? You lawyers are all slime. Damn it. I almost had him. Ugh. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Schmidt. Maya, I mean, <clears throat> gee, Mia, Mia, Mia. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But the but gee, it's it's over. We can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yeah, you kind of can, you dumb fuck. That doesn't mean you can still win. Try thinking outside the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and you can get through. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and we'll have you through. Right? Right? No, last. Can you think of, of a reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Yeah, I do. Wait, maybe I can prove it. Must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence right in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words, let's see you pull this one off. But she this evidence that proves the clock is turning slow. Passport. Prepare. Take that! Take that. <laughs> the victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day, there. The clock was three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. The victim had already set her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Yeah. Proof enough for you, Mr. Schwitt? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, there he goes. Kill the man.
Jesus fucking Christ. Someone pick up the body. Well, this case has certainly turned weird. Mr. Payne, your client? He, he was arrested and has been taken to your honor. Very well. Good for right. Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I have ever seen so much, someone just so handsome complete the defense so quickly. Find the true culprit at the same time. Jesus Christ, did I mention your hands? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Jesus Christ. Yeah. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Buds, not guilty. Yeah, confetti, where the fuck did this come from? Yeah. No. And with that, court is goddamn adjourned. I'm gonna get myself some pretzels. Or some nachos. Probably nachos. It turns out that Frank Chouette was a common bird. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Chouette let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Swift grabbed, grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find and clocked her in the side of the head. Eh. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Oh boy! I still can't believe I won that. I totally pulled that out of my ass like every anime hero. Right. Good job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I had all to your boobs. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battle in there. It's been a while since I've seen the trial end on such a satisfying note. Never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over, man. <laughs> Oh, God damn it, Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Uh, Nick? Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good, wait, 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 wait. I mean, no. Bad. Bad, bad. Bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. What? I said you with these gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. And Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> uh, thanks. I really do owe you much. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate, Dennis. Booby, my treat. Oh, no. I could have. I was the one who got you on the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. It's also the murder weapon. I actually did it. A, a present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence? That... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a... Uh, Yo, Nick, can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that just make you want to cry? Not really. Are you really so sure? Excuse me. I think she thought quite a lot of you. Okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing. Because you're kind of lame, Das. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friends? Something 
Maybe that proves how she felt about him. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. The hell is she talking about? I understand. Take that. Check this out, man. Proof positive that you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? It's kind of the thing that killed her. It's the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's pretty fucking heavy. To take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks, man. Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And, and in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. So we be up? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. Uh, like, literally on you? I'm down. We'll drink a toast to the innocent buttons. Yeah! Oh, speaking of, of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, yeah, part of it. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Are you coming on to me? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. I'll let you call. know it then, but that clock was soon gonna be in, a, in, a, in the center of another incident, and my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would never, would be one promise that I want to be able to keep. Ah, finally, oh my god, my back is so stiff. <laughs> but yeah, that was episode one, the first turnabout. Uh... Thank you for joining me. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. S yes, subscribe. Uh, subscribe down below. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, I'll upload more a little bit later after I stop being in pain because I'm sitting in an awkward position. Anyways, have a nice night, guys.